A common visual effects trick is the desire to add something into a scene where the camera is moving, and to retain the camera's original motion. Moving cameras look a lot more interesting than locked off cameras in many cases. Well, there's ways of doing that. You could use Mocha, which comes with After Effects. You can use After Effects' 3D camera tracker. You can use their other traditional trackers. Or now you can use Warp Stabilizer VFX to do something similar. And let me show you that workflow. I've already used Warp Stabilizer to go ahead and analyze the motion in this scene. By default, it tries to smooth out the original camera's motion. But what I need to do is this. I need to completely stop any of the camera's motion add my additional elements, maybe effects, etc., then reintroduce the camera's motion back into the scene. Ah, now that's the trick, reintroducing the motion or, as it's known, reversing stabilization. Well, doing that is a multi-step process. With Warp Stabilizer VFX, I make sure that the advanced section is twirled open, go to Objective, which is no longer to stabilize, but to reverse the stabilization. The first step is picking reversible stabilization. That says no motion, stabilize only. And now you have a locked off shot that you can start modifying with effects applied to this layer. For example, paint is actually an effect. I'm gonna choose the clone tool, double click the footage to open it up in the layer panel. All painting must be done in the layer panel press shift forward slash to center my shot here, and say, hey, let's just for laughs clone this menu bar. I'm gonna hold option to say that's my clone source, go elsewhere in the frame, and paint my new menu bar partially across the screen. Since it's a locked off shot, that menu bar will stay right in that position. Let's say I wanna do something else particularly silly, like add, oh, effect, how about, generate audio waveform. Make it look like he's transcribing something he's actually listening to. I want to composite this on top of the original. I want to drag my effects points up into the corners he's looking at, such as there, and maybe out here. Assign it to an audio track I already have in this project. In this case, I have something from the Lunar Rover. I'll turn on that speaker and audition that. Well, I can see I'm gonna to have to keep my eye on the road. Go to somewhere where we have some audio and maybe come up with a more pleasing color, maybe based on colors already in this footage for my audio waveform. Might work better if it was green. And if it was dragged down, say, maybe to align with our new menu bar, like right around there. Again, locked off shot. It looks like it stays where it should. Now here's the important and not very intuitive last step. The last thing you need to do is reverse the stabilization. And to do that, you take your current Warp Stabilizer VFX, which already has all the analysis data already in it, duplicate it, which is Command-D on Mac or Control-D on Windows, drag the duplicate to the bottom of your effects stack, so it's after everything else that you've already done, then change the objective to reverse stabilization. Since it's working off of the same analysis data, you can just use that data differently. And now I'm back into a frame shot again. Let's go back to our original composition, spend a moment queuing up a RAM preview, and you'll see that our painted menu bar, our audio waveform effect, etc., now track along with the original camera movement in this shot. Well, I can see I'm gonna have to keep my eye on the road. Boy, there's a, it's really rolling hills, Joe. Just like 14. I might wanna do some other tweaks, like maybe rotate that clone stroke a little bit to get a little bit better perspective, etc. but you get the point. Again, this is something you can do with other tools like Mocha, 3D Camera Tracker to create 3D rolled, etc. But Warp Stabilizer gives you another way of approaching this type of shot, particularly if you wanna add something to the scene that requires effects. Lock it off, apply your effects, then reverse the lock off to go back to the original camera movement. And by the way, in order to get a really good locked off shot, I did what I showed you in the previous movie of deleting all the points around his arms and hands, so I had a nice, accurate stabilization. 